TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gunn stresses to Washington's most senior defense press that bolstering Israel-U.S. cooperation to contend with the Iranian threat is imperative. Jordan's King Abdullah II warns that the vacuum that emerged in Syria in light of Russia's gradual disengagement is being exploited by the Islamic Republic of Iran and its proxies. Secretary General of the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, acknowledges that his political bloc has lost its majority in parliament. U.S. Central Command Commander General Michael Carilla has concluded his first visit to Israel last night after becoming the first foreign general to observe an IDF exercise from the highly classified Fortress of Zion subterranean command and control bunker. Alongside the observation of the wide-scale chariots of fire exercise, which includes additional smaller and scale joint U.S.-Israel drills in its backdrop, General Kurilla held a series of meetings with IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, during which joint challenges of the IDF and the U.S. Armed Forces were discussed, including, first and foremost, the Iranian nuclear threat and Iranian regional entrenchment throughout the Middle East. IDF officials also presented the main points of the IDF operational activity in Israel's northern and Palestinian arenas, with an emphasis on future innovations in FAR, strike, intelligence, connectivity, and digital capabilities. Meanwhile, in Washington, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz held subsequent meetings last night and this morning with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, respectively. In his first meeting, Jerusalem's top defense official highlighted to Washington's national security advisor the supreme importance in which the Israeli government regards the bolstering of the ironclad and unique relations with the United States, all the while raising the subject of the advancement of Iran's nuclear program and the escalation of hostile activity by Iran in the region. In this context, Minister Gunn stressed the necessity to strengthen cooperation and preparatory work to contend with any scenario. Subsequently, this morning, Defense Minister Gunn met with his American counterpart, Lloyd Austin, for a meeting at the Pentagon, during which he voiced gratitude for the ongoing cooperation between the respective defense establishments and for the Secretary's personal commitment to the security of the State of Israel. During their meeting, Minister Gantz re-emphasized the historic changes in the region alongside the mounting threat posed by Iran's aggression and support for terrorism. In light of the changing regional architecture, Jerusalem's top defense official also stressed a critical need for a practical coalition under U.S. leadership together with regional partners in facing Iran. It is important to know that prior to the meeting, which Minister Gunz held with Washington's top defense officials, Saudi Vice Defense Minister Khalid bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud held meetings with the U.S. National Security Advisor and Secretary of Defense, respectively, with discussions focusing chiefly on Iran's malign behavior throughout the Middle East in general and Yemen in particular. Separately, the Washington-based Hoover Institute released an interview, which it recorded last week with visiting King Abdullah II of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, during which the monarch of Israel's eastern neighbor insisted that no matter what relations Arab countries have with Israel, unless the Palestinian issue is resolved, the Jewish state will not be able to integrate into the Middle East. No matter what relations Arab countries have with Israel, if we don't solve the Palestinian issue, it's, it's really two steps forward and two steps back as far as I'm concerned. So we're all working uh, knowing that the last month was a, a difficult month. Um, we had Ramadan, Passover uh, and Easter holidays. Uh, but can we afford to go through this again next year? Right. Um, and so I hope that the, the dust will settle in the next couple of weeks. And then how do we get Israelis and Palestinians to the table?
my discussions in Ramallah, and I've been there um, several times, and uh, discussion with, with, with the Israeli um, leadership is, uh, I mean, obviously we believe in a two-state solution, and, and I think that's the only solution that allows uh, Israel's integration into the Middle East is when we solve the issues for the Palestinians. King Abdullah further responded to a question regarding Iran's malign behavior, highlighting that while Saudi Arabia, Gulf states and the United States are respectively engaged in diplomacy with the Ayatollah regime, the Islamic Republic continues to foment instability throughout the region. I think that is happening on, on multiple um, um, avenues. Um, the, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is reaching out to, to the Iranians. Uh, Gulf countries uh, have uh, dialogue. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure um, uh, how tactical or strategic from the Iranian point of view uh, that is. Um, obviously, we want everybody to be part of a, a new Middle East and, uh, and, and a move forward. Um, but we, we do have um, security challenges. We're seeing um, uh, border attacks on a regular basis, and we know who's behind that. Um, uh, one of the, I think, one of the issues that we're studying uh, at this point, um, whether people like to hear this or not, the, the presence of the Russians in the south uh, in Syria uh, was a source of calm because they were making sure that we could deconflict. Um, and if you remember correctly, there was a deconfliction center between the United States and Russia yes. in Jordan to make sure that um, more good days and bad days. That vacuum will be filled by um, uh, the Iranians and their proxies. Um, so unfortunately, we're looking at uh, maybe a, an escalation of problems on our borders. Mm -hmm. So do the politics, the uh, negotiations that are going on between the Sa uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the Gulf countries, um, the United States, does that move um, Iran into a positive, more positive light? I hope so. I'm not seeing it on the ground at the moment. As to elaborate on the implications of the Russia-Ukraine war for the Middle East, King Abdullah acknowledged that Russia's scaleback of troops from Syria is being exploited by Iran. From the Jordanian perspective, um, the, the Russians are on our border um, in, 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 in Syria. Um, and so that is part of our calculation. Uh, the, the Russians uh, play a role in the quartet, uh, the peace process between the Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, so they are active international play players. And uh, again, it'll be very interesting to see um, post-Ukraine, if we can put it that way, where the Russians are in Syria. Um, they were, I, I think, the predominant force. Um, I know that now that gap is being filled by the Iranians. Um, that quite possibly will create more insecurities in the region. So that's something that uh, we have to, to look at. Turning to Lebanon, where Secretary General of the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, Acknowledge that his political bloc has lost its majority in the Beirut parliament that after parliamentary elections earlier this week on Sunday saw gains by the anti-Hezbollah Christian Lebanese Forces Party and more than a dozen reform-minded newcomers as well as a small number of independents. But the important thing in the new election ما في فريق سياسي اليوم بالبلد خلافا لما كان عليه الحال بال2018 و2009 و2005 ما حدا بيقدر يطلع يدعي ويقول انه الأغلبية النيابية الأكثرية النيابية معي مع هذا الفريق أو مع هذا الفريق والحزب الله and its ally عمل held on to all of parliament's sectarian Shiite seats the majority of Hezbollah's allies lost their mandates diminishing the Iran-aligned bloc from 71 seats to 58 within Lebanon's 128-member parliament. And while deep-rooted animosity between the Iranian-led, Saudi-backed and French-aligned blocs remain, Hezbollah believes it can work with its enemies on finding common ground. <laughs> ممكن نختلف على موضوعات أساسية بس بالتأكيد هناك أمور ممكن أنه نقدر نتفق عليها مثل ما كان عم بيصير بالمجالس النيابية السابقة خلينا نروح على نقاط الاتفاق خلينا نروح على نقاط التعاون ونشتغل على قاعدة الشراكة والتعاون هذا بلد هذا قدر هلأ هذا مثل ما أنا حكيت قبل الأيام بيعني بطء بيعني انه في تعقيد بيعني انه في صعوبات ايه لانه البديل هو الفراغ والبديل هو الفوضى والبديل هو الاقصاء والبديل هو الفشل
It is important to explain that Sunday's election results have left Beirut's legislature split into several camps, none of which have a majority, raising the prospects of political paralysis and tensions that could delay badly needed reforms to steer Lebanon out of its economic collapse. Meanwhile, in other news, rocket alert sirens sounded in a number of Israeli communities along the border with Lebanon this morning, when Iron Dome surface-to-air interceptors were launched to intercept an unidentified target. Nevertheless, following a prompt investigation into the incident, the IDF spokesperson's unit released a statement in which it announced, quote, due to an error in identification earlier this morning, the IDF aerial defense array launched interceptors which caused the alarms heard in northern Israel. Subsequently, it has been revealed that the Iron Dome was errantly activated against an IDF drone due to its mistaken identity. No injuries or damage were reported and an inquiry into the incident has been launched. Thank you for watching us. I'd like to point out once more that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. If you're blessed by our productions, therefore, please consider making a financial contribution. It will in turn enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Separately, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our unceasing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.